now and forever in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have the great joy to celebrate this votive mass. This is the feast of a great virgin and martyr of the church, the feast of Saint Philomena. Our bishop has given us the permission to celebrate this votive mass. We go back then to the the year 291 when she was born as a Greek princess, some say in the island of Corfu. She was martyred by the hands of the emperor himself, Diocletian, in about the year 304. What is special about this great saint is that she is the only one in the course of the Catholic history and canonizations who was canonized by her miracles alone. This is why she is like any other saint, and this is why on February the 14th, 1961, she was taken out of the calendar because of this reason, because normally in the canonization process, we, we need to know about a person living a life of virtue by eyewitness accounts, also by the working of miracles. So one of the elements was lacking in Saint Philomena. So why was she canonized then? Well, we have to go back to this hidden saint. She was missing for 1,500 years. What I tell you now is a fruit of private revelation given to three different people at different times, but all collaborating with each other. She was, as she said, as she revealed to these three different religious about her private life. She was, as we said, a princess. Her parents were the king and the queen. And at that time, Diocletian, who was after Nero, probably one of the, the worst persecutors of the Christians, decided to take over the world. And he wanted this island. The parents went to Rome to sue for peace. And because Saint Philomena was such a beautiful girl, they took her with themselves. They had been struggling also before this time to conceive a child. A doctor was in their household who told them to pray to the true living God. They became Christians and they conceived a child called Philomena, which means daughter of light or the beloved. They went to Rome to sue for peace as soon as they entered the courtroom or the, the room where the Diocletian Emperor was. He locked his eyes on Philomena. She was 13 year old, a beautiful girl, and he wanted to take her hand in marriage. She said no. This is the only time when somebody had said no to this emperor. He became infatuated with her. The parents begged Philomena to give her assent to the emperor so that they could have peace. They said, Please give your assent because we can have peace for ourselves, for our families, and for our nation. She said no. Why? Because she had already promised herself her chastity to Jesus Christ, our Savior. Nothing would shake her. Diocletian became obsessed. He tried to kill her many times. The first thing he did, she was stripped and she was flagellated like Jesus Christ. She was placed into a dungeon on bread and water for 40 days. And this was very difficult for her. She prayed to the Blessed Virgin Mary, who appeared to her after 37 days and said, Patience, Saint Philomena, wait. Patience, Philomena, wait three days more. In these three days, the emperor tried to drowned her. This is why you see her statue and some of her images with an anchor. He placed an anchor around her neck and took her out to the river Tiber. She sunk to the bottom, but miraculously two angels appeared, released the anchor. She floated to the top and many thousands were converted. He placed her back into the dungeon and then he had some, some archers 
dip their arrows in, in a fire and they fired their eyes toward, towards Philomena because he thought at this point in time she was a witch. Lo and behold, before they entered this uh, beautiful saint, they turned back on themselves and killed the archers themselves. He became so incest and so mad that at three o'clock on the Friday, on the 40th day, she was decapitated. She died in ecstasy and her soul flew to the living God. This is the great Saint Philomena. She was missing for 1500 years. She was martyred in around about the year 302 and for 1500 years nobody knew anything about her life until they were searching in the tombs of Saint Priscilla for some relics of this saint, but they stumbled upon a tomb which said it had three tiles enclosing the tomb, Pax Tecum Philomena, peace be with you Philomena. There was some dried blood and some dried bones and the sign of the palms of a martyr. These relics were then taken by a saint, a holy, sorry, a holy priest in Naples to a place called Mugnano. And from that point in time, she began to perform thousands and thousands of miracles. She was venerated by all the popes at this time, Pope Gregory the 16th, Pope Pius the 9th, 10th, and 11th and 12th. And in fact, Pope Pius IX suffered from a grave disease of epilepsy. He gave the, his cure, accredited his cure to Saint Philomena. If you don't know also this time, there was a great protagonist called Saint Pauline Jaricot, who was the, the founder of the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith. She was about to die. She decided she went to visit Pope Pius IX and said her only hope was to go to Mugnano. She went on the ninth day, Saint Philomena delivered, she was cured, and she went back to tell Pope Pius IX, who made her reside in the Vatican for one year to authenticate this miracle. This is the great intercession of this holy saint, a great saint for our times. Why? Because she is the saint who protects especially the purity of the children. Look what happened, as we said, 14th of February, 1961, she was taken out of the liturgy Padre Peu said that the confusion now concerning Saint Philomena is coming directly from the devil. Look what happened, we know, in the 1960s with the sexual revolution, the immorality, Woodstock, etc. It seems as if Saint Philomena was placed to one side and we had this wave, this wave of impurity. So what can we learn about this beautiful saint today whose name we said is daughter of light. Her, va her virtues sparkle like a diamond in all its strength and splendor in her heroic martyrdom. We had this grace to celebrate yesterday Saint Lawrence. We read in the liturgy where God sent him a great consolation when he was being burned on the gridiron. Saint Philomena was very, very frightened as a girl thinking about her death. This is why Our Lady appeared to her and she was given this great consolation to fortify her in her martyrdom. Times are very difficult now in the church, inside and outside of the church. We have to be ready for this martyrdom. Perhaps it will be not just a white martyrdom. For some of us, it could be also a red martyrdom. So we have to pray to these great saints to fortify us ready so that we can also fly in ecstasy to God our Father on the day of our birthday into heaven. Saint Philomena who consecrated her life and her virginity to God and who herself overcame temptation will intercede for our own purity of heart, mind and body if we ask humbly, persistently and with faith. She is the great saint which we have to pray and implore today. 
Besides beckoning to all, all souls to purity, God emphasizes the extremely precious value of consecrated virginity through saints like Philomena, who earn their crown of martyrdom in defense of this gift to God. Through the example of Saint Philomena, God beckons souls to answer his call and likewise consecrate themselves fully to him out of love. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, learn about this saint because she was much revered by the great Saint John Vianney. He called her the new light of the church militant and he gave all of the credit of his miracles to this wonderful saint today. She reminds souls that God is the source of all knowledge and wisdom to rekindle our supernatural faith. So we ask the Blessed Virgin Mary this day to give us a great love of this Virgin Martyr and that one day she will be restored to her beloved place within the church. Amen. May the holy name of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and under the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.